Namaste and let's go live on the bicycle on Sunday, April the 7th at 7.13 a.m. It's currently 21 degrees. I've ridden 30 kilometres and uh, it's a cracker of an autumn morning again this morning. It's actually warming up nicely. So very pleasant, very peaceful out here, out on the streets, <laughs> coming to you live. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic day. So this morning's topic, uh, you know, I've been doing uh, a series of understanding videos. Understanding love, understanding fear, understanding our false ego. How about understanding that there's something in my eye other than my pupil. <laughs> so this morning's <laughs> video uh, is a continuation of that series of understanding different things that happen to us. And this one is in relation to ourselves, in relation to others. So I've called it understanding and managing someone's anger. So I posted a meme during the week which said, basically said that um, anger is, um, when we understand what anger is, that it's a projection of someone's pain and lack of inner peace, then we automatically have a, um, a feeling of compassion towards that person, automatically, because we realize that they are hurting and that they are lashing out and that this anger is not actually about us, even though it may be directed at us and it may be directed at us temporarily or it may be directed at us, you know, over uh, con a period of time, like a continuous, continuous um, amount of anger, but when we understand that it's not about us, that we just happen to be in the firing line, so to speak, and we start to understand and develop an empathy and compassion towards the person that's experiencing the anger, and, and naturally we want to relieve them of this pain. We want to help them with it. If we came across an animal that was suffering, that was, had maybe, say, uh, had maybe cut its foot a little bit on the, uh, the soft pad of its foot on, a, on something sharp on the, in the street, we came across this animal and it was whimpering, and whimpering is a sign of pain. As we approached it, we might be met with a reaction of either um, it may just stay submissive or it may, this animal may um, become fearful and aggressive towards us and, and angry towards us because it's, it's coming from this position of, of physical pain, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's lashing out from the physical pain it's feeling. So when we look at people and we see when they're lashing out at us, it's very, very easy to get caught up in that strong emotion and to react to it in a way that is not helpful for us or them. And it's very easy to believe the lie that a lot of people project, that their anger is because of us. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I'll say. They'll say, and I've seen this so many times, they'll say, you made me angry. You did this to me. You did that to me. That's just a, I've spoken about this before, that's just our inability to take responsibility um, for what we are actually thinking and what we are feeling. And when we don't take responsibility for it, then we are stuck in a, an endless loop. We can't grow beyond that point when we blame others. So an angry person is throwing out this, this pain and fear, you know, this pain that they have inside that they are lashing out towards us with comes from a fear and it comes from feeling unloved. They are afraid that they are not going to be loved. Thank you for watching, uh, Gene. I've received your books if you're listening now. I've received your books, they are fantastic and I'll be doing a post about them. Been reading through, so thank you very much. 
It's, it's amazing, wonderful work that you've been doing. And it's, it, it really is Im impressive. So thank you very much, Jean. Um, so back on topic. So the person that's angry towards us will blame us for their thoughts and feelings, which of course is irrational <laughs> when, when in fact it is a projection of where they are at and it's a projection of a fear. Um, and uh, oh yes, Karen, it is a nice day for it. And yes, thanks, Jean, thank you. Um, so it is, of course, irrational um, and illogical for somebody who is not at peace within themselves to be blaming us for their lack of, of inner peace. And, but it helps to understand why somebody is not at inner peace, because that is, that is crucial in uh, being able to effectively manage someone's anger. So we may not know the exact details, but in a general sense, we can safely um, assume, and I know making an assumption is a very um, dangerous thing to do, but we can fairly safely assume that the person is coming from a point of fear, uh, coming from a point of lack, of disconnect, and they are feeling, they are afraid, they're feeling unloved and, and afraid that they won't receive that love. Now, this is something that they w probably won't admit to to your face and it's something and because the reason why they won't admit it is because it's something that they're not even completely aware of themselves then because they don't even admit it to their own face it's only in the in the darkest moments when they are feeling really really in a terrible state that they might break down enough to have that realization that they may feel bad about the anger they're directing towards you, but they may not be aware of why they are angry. But in, in a really distressed moment, they may break down and gain an insight into that anger and start to understand how lost and lonely they're feeling inside. So if a person is angry towards us and we can see that it's not about us, and we can see that it's because they are feeling lost, feeling afraid, feeling that they are unlovable or unworthy, or that they will never receive love, then Karen says, very true. And Susie says, hello from Mornington. Hello, Susie, what's it like down there this morning? I hope it's as nice as it is here um, on the peninsula. Um, so we, so the, the next question to be asked is why? Why is someone, why would anyone reach a state where they're feeling so disconnected that they would lash out like an angry dog that was hurting in pain or a, a bear that had a thorn in its foot? Why would they lash out at just anyone and then blame that person for what they're feeling? <clears throat> it comes from, the source of the anger, comes from believing a lie, chasing an illusion, chasing a shadow and thinking that they will find happiness and love in places where they won't find it. It's understandable, we all make this mistake, we spend most of our lives making this mistake. It's, it's the thing we all have in common, is that we all believe the lie that by having, by, um, what's it, satisfying is the word I'm looking for, by satisfying our material desires that that somehow uh, translates into a satisfaction of our spiritual wants and needs, which again is illogical um, and irrational. And it, it stems from a couple of different areas. It stems from a lack of awareness, of a, of a deeper awareness. And it stems from a, as I say, a believing of a lie, which has been peddled to us from birth from before birth actually, that um, if we just have all the material goodies, then we'll be happy. So you, you get someone that's angry towards you and you look, dig a little bit deeper into their life and you'll see the immense, immense dissatisfaction that they are experiencing because they are 
following a path that is common, that everyone else is doing, or just about everyone else is doing, and they're experiencing that um, the proof of the pudding is not in the eating, because they're eating the pudding that is meant to be tasty, and it's not. It's just, it's leaving a sour taste. It's not leaving a deep satisfaction. It's leaving a temporary, temporary titillation. So, and that is producing a response, or they are responding to that experience, I should say, uh, with a deep dissatisfaction and uh, feelings of, of dissatisfaction on many different levels, like that why can't they find the happiness that others seem to, seem to have around them, which is, again, a mistake to believe that because just about everyone else is in the same boat as well. And, um, and then uh, this, you know, I've, I've gone and, which part of it is, you know, I've gone and done everything that I thought would make me happy and I've got all the goodies and I'm driving the Mercedes and I'm, I'm living in the nice mansion and I've got my, uh, you know, partner and kids and, and uh, they go to a good school and they've got a good education and, and yet, you know, the overall feeling is one of just like lost, just, you know, and that in fact is enhanced with someone that has more material, more opportunity for material goodies they actually can feel more lost. It's because they're, they're like, well, it's like the person, the average person think, oh yeah, if I get the big house, if I get the Mercedes, whatever, then I'll be happy. But this person's got it. This person's got it and they're not, they're not satisfied. They're so dissatisfied that they're going around with a scowl on their face. They're blaming others for their dissatisfaction. Um, and that's just creating uh, connections with others that are not nice at all. Interesting to have a look at the photos of the facial expressions of extremely rich people. Just do it for as a, you know, as an interesting thing to do. Just Google it. And, uh, you know, I'm talking about the heads of banking corporations and, and, you know, major businesses and so forth. Have a look at the way when you see them, uh, you know, public photos of them. Have a look at the, have a look at the lack of the smile on their face. It's it's really, when you know what to look for, it's really obvious, and that's what it's about in life. Know what to look for, and you will see it. So, you will see they hold their faces really tight. You will see there's there's just not any sense of happy. They're not relaxed. They're like having to sort of really be on top of everything and you know what is what is the point of it all they've got all this material goodies and it's provided no benefit for them you know except they can shit in a classier toilet and and sleep on a more comfortable bed but that's not connecting with their soul it's not f fulfilling the need in the heart that we all have to love and be loved Kathleen says, from this environment can come a dysfunctional environment and confuse sad children. Definitely, Kathleen. It's, it's a product of an environment that teaches a lie. So I've, I've said this before a few times. Don't believe the lie. The lie is the lie of materialism, which is propagated by Maya through our mind. And I've done a, a live stream about Maya. Um, and the consequences, the ramifications of believing the lie of Maya are very disastrous for us. They're very empty. So, and morning, Donna, thank you for watching. So that's the main points I wanted to make that when understanding and managing someone else's anger, the points are to realize it's about them. It's a fear that they have that they're projecting through anger. It's a fear of not being, of feeling unloved and unsatisfied and unworthy. Um, it's a, it's a feeling that comes from following, chasing illusions, chasing the wrong goals. And the best way that we can manage someone's anger is to not take it on, but to actually 
detach ourselves from it if we have the ability to do it and to see it for what it is and to feel great um, empathy and compassion towards the other person. We wish them to be happy. Uh, we feel very sad that they're not. We feel sorry for them that they're not. We wish them to be happy. We wish them to feel the love that every living being deserves, the unconditional universal love. We wish them to tap into it and to feel it. So if you have that situation happening in your life, perhaps you can just step back a little bit and have a think about how you can direct a, a different understanding towards the person that is not at peace inside themselves. So I hope you've gotten something out of this live stream. I'm gonna continue writing on this magnificent morning. Remember to live vegan and save lives. And I look forward to live streaming with you again soon. Ahimsa.